uh, being a choreographer and being involved with the bar where I taught girls to dance for 20 years. I wanted always the boys to do my dances. I, I wanted a gay bar. I, I saw it in my vision. I knew exactly what I wanted the wallpaper to look like. I knew exactly the type of dances I wanted to do. I didn't know how to execute it. But, but I was kicking it around for a good decade. And then we met doing this movie and the Poconos. And <laughs> we started dating and after about eight months, we said, okay, what do you want to do now? You want to uh, take this to the next level? You want to get married and have kids? Or do you want to have fun? And she said, I want to have fun. And I said, well, what is your idea of fun? And she said, you know, I always wanted to open a gay country western bar. And I said, <laughs> it's a true story. I'm in. And that's what he said. I'm in. I didn't have the name of it. And I, I said, that's it. right. I said, well, <laughs> as long as we name it Flaming Saddles, Chris I'm came in. Up with the name. And she said, go. Uh, my first impression of her was light, just light. And that's exactly what I was looking for in my life at that time was light. That's turned to darkness, but that day, <laughs> light. Well, and I think, and this goes with, I don't think you can get something from a uh, brochure or a questionnaire, because when I shook his hand, what I found was electric, electricity through, through his handshake. and. Um, Apparently that's what I was looking for. He still is electric, but sometimes he's shocking, and sometimes it's nice. If you can get some music from the Electric Light Orchestra to come up underneath this, wow. But it's true. That's why I think you can't get anything through a brochure. I think you have to touch somehow, even if it's just brushing by yeah. somebody. I think the electrical uh, feeling of it is what attracts. Mm. Proud. When someone says American, I think proud, because we are America. You know, we fought hard to be who we are, and you could do what you want here, and we certainly did. And you could do anything. Yeah. yeah. Freedom is what I think is America. That's exactly would be my response. Freedom is the ability to be who you are, what you are, as long as you don't hurt somebody else mm -hmm. or make somebody else's day more difficult than need be. Other than that, let freedom ring. Let be who you are, be your creative self, don't listen to anybody telling you what you can and can't do, unless we're talking about hurting somebody else, crime, something like that. But as far as the human spirit, there is nothing more important than freedom. That's the creative nature of of this world. It's the creative nature. It's what's most beautiful about every person is watching them come out of that box of where they weren't allowed to express that freedom. This bar, if we've learned anything about from, from people, is that this is a blue collar country western gay bar and all of our clientele come in and say, this is the bar I always wanted to be in but I could never express myself in it. And now I can walk in here, be who I am, sing these songs in the jukebox, two step around the bar, have a hoot and holler at night and say, yippee I'm gay, mother trucker. <laughs> But we learn to fit in the box. And until you realize you don't have to fit in the box, you're not free. When you realize you don't have to fit in the box, then you're free again to do whatever it is that you want to do. And be proud of it, commit to it, be happy. I really believe, I believe that too. Ah, oh, it's your truth serum. Well, when you're a child, it's okay to take yeah. all the cereal and pour it out on your table and pour the milk all over it and splash and splash around. Yeah. And then one day, all of a sudden, you go, you go, what was that? And they go, no. Go, what do you mean no? I never heard of no before. Right. And then it's a life of no. Then it's no, you can't go out at night. No, you can't date that person. No, you, no, you can't, can't have the car. You can't dance this no, way. You can't, you can't look that way. No, you can't wear that. No, you can't you hang out can't with them. No, like no, 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 no. Until you come to New York City or somewhere else and you go, yes! Yet, with that said, we're here in Hell's Kitchen on 9th Avenue as a straight couple that opened a gay bar. We are shocked. 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 At the, 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 the perception of what we would consider hip, straight people in New York City. We are absolutely blown away. And that's when it got personal for us. We were painting this th this bar and building it and putting tables in here. We'd have people look in. That looked like hip West Siders in New York saying, not another gay bar. Right, can't or, believe what the shallowness of their thoughts. I mean, we don't need another gay bar it's in Hell's Gate. Well, who are you? You don't need another. Who are you? What, what do you need, another, another Irish bar that can't make it? Right. You need another sports <laughs> bar that can't pay it? Right. You know, what, what, and who are you to talk about what what the sexual preferences or that the type of community should go into this place it got us really and angry. then also I think that they're afraid they're afraid of what they don't know they don't realize that that's right. the gay community is like a straight community except they're gay that's the only difference they're, they they like the same sex so it's all the same relationships are the same no matter what 
So I think what we have done, what we've learned from this is that we're breaking down that wall. So when people come in here, you know, they may not be, when they come through the doors, they may be afraid of same-sex marriage. By the time they leave, they're going, well, this isn't so bad. They're not, like, running around naked. I mean, I, the perception of what goes on in a gay bar. Well, they think from, we have sex all the right, time. Right, from yeah, a straight community. Lines off the floor. Exactly, is, is insane to me. in my me. 20s, yes. Right, it doesn't even that. make sense. It doesn't even make sense. And I, so I really believe it's another top thing. And it's learned, and they're afraid of what they don't know. As soon as they it's, know, it's mostly religion. Then they, then they cross over. It's mostly which fear is, of religion. Which is taught. It's, it's mostly the brimstone and fire of the Bible, right. the interpretation. They're afraid they're burn in hell. And it's absolute nonsense. It's ridiculous. You know? and, and that's what's great. And that's what you know. Um, you know, to be in the, the the Pride Parade this year with Mario Cuomo as as a straight man who really did a, a, a great fight to get New York State. To, you know, that was huge. You know, and to see that. Because what's, you know, for us now, it's not really a, a gay issue. It's a civil rights issue. That's right. Yeah. It's a civil rights issue. It is, and, and we're on the bandwagon. And, 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 and we really as, are. A, as a straight couple, we have as much at stake to protect the civil rights of everybody. Yeah, because if the rights of one American over the Absolutely, the and, and, uh, and, and that's right. And, and, so that, that's that, and, that, and that's the yeah. state version. Now let's go to the religious version. Either we're all God's kids, or none no, of us are not. God's kids. Right. The, the, the gay boy in high school is coming out earlier. I think that's the most progressive. The high schools are, are really embracing, mm -hmm. you know, the LGBT community at, at such an earlier age now. And they should. That's the most powerful thing that's happening. Harvey Milk should get the Nobel Peace Prize. Harvey Milk yeah. is so powerful, so smart, and so courageous. He is more of a leader and more, so we should be as proud of as anybody in the history of the United States. That guy had it. He had it down. He had, he knew exactly where to go. He knew exactly how to do it. And he he was fearless. But there aren't any gay guys who really... Who are warriors. Are, I grew up around warriors. That's right. That's right. That's right. You have Paul Monet and all these guys yeah. who did something. Right. That's right. Now that's it's just everyone's so but that's, cool, like you know what? But that could be said. Very, that could be said for this culture. And being correct in about that things. could be that's, that, right. that's, that's, that's right. Because I have friends in the black community that say same thing about the young black yeah. kids. What they take for granted. I have women take it for you know. It, it's the same. It, it's a part of this this culture. And again. I'm the last guy to sound like these young, these young kids no, today. But, very very but these show. young right. kids That's today right. are assholes, you know. <laughs> and they're just, they're just it, 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 I have never seen it, and and I've heard it from teachers, I've heard it from bus drivers. Mm -hmm. This the sense of entitlement. Today well, that's what it is. is insane, and that's what it is. The gap. So of course, it of, really of course, is it. forget Harvey Milk. Right. I'm entitled to this freedom, right. and so yeah, well, you are entitled to this freedom. But let me tell you how you got there. But with that sense of entitlement, I think that it's coming back around because the real young ones that we see want to learn about the history. And I sit in this bar night after night, and I speak to everybody about how they came out, what their family history is. I'm fascinated by it, and the younger they are, the more inquisitive they are about. Well, what came before them. That's right. So I think that there's a gap that was really um, entitled, really to the point of demise, of angry uh, people, it's awful. And I think it's starting to turn. I think it will always turn but because you have, you can only go on so long to be that entitled. But that's the arts responsibility. Really the truth. So even if you turn one person at a time and one bar at a time or one group at a time, I think the younger ones are more interested in what came before. When we rode in that float and that pride, Parade. When we came down Christopher Street, oh, it, was, it was insane. You that, could feel it. There it was, was a amazing. power. And that, uh, even though that was not was the, the same Stonewall, even though it's not the same address. You just know that. No, but there was. A but you could yes, feel it. It was so feeling. powerful. The, the 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 road got narrower. And, and everybody it, was crazy. You know, but it, but as, but as far as what we're talking about, the entitlement. It, it, that's the arts job. That's theater, film. Literature. That's our job as artists to teach the younger ones where, where the war was, how it was fought, and why you have these. And make freedoms. them understand, you know, really the power of. So it's through, it's got to be through music. It's got to be through song. It's got to be through dance. It's got to it's got to be through stage. What do you um, think about them cutting it from schools, though? To me, you know, that America isn't pumping out the art that it once did is is indicative of this culture too. The best. The, the art of today is on the floor of psychotherapists' offices. That's where it's lying. It's true. You know, Very true. let's take it there. Let's absolve the pain, the suffering, whatever it is that used to be the fuel for great art. Well, I, I have two theme songs. 
that comes to my mind right away. Yeah. First of all, as a dancer, my favorite movie was Singing in the Rain, and I love Gene Kelly. So I would always be singing in the rain, and that still is my mantra for today, because I'll sing no matter what. I'm happy in my life today, soup to nuts. However, Brick House used to be my... Uh, my theme song when I was a bartender. Is this, to, is this <laughs> theme song to represent our relationship? No, first. Time. Okay, because my relationship well, well, became a brick house. Wait, get a brick house. However, it sings in the rain. Right. But singing in the rain, Gene Kelly would be the theme song through my whole life. Okay. Because I've been dancing since I was two, and I'm still dancing at 47. <laughs> um, still crazy after all these years. <laughs> and that's true. I found my old lover. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're still crazy after all this <laughs> What I would have liked to have left behind was concern of what other people think about me. And I did a good job of getting rid of that pretty early in life, but I wish I got rid of it even earlier. I also wish I was a little bit more aware of structure, not mine, other people's. Because it was their structure that allowed me to be swept away, if you will. And I didn't understand, um, I didn't understand clandestine power. Uh, and that was out of innocence. But when you're meeting people or in front of people and you believe they have your best interests and are sincere about their admiration of your talent, it's not always that way. You know, yes. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And I wish I knew that earlier. And again, with that, lack of concern of what other people's opinion is of me. I think what I would like to leave behind or have other people learn from is that you don't always have to fight to fit in. I've been dancing since I was two and I was in ballet and I had hair like this that didn't go up in a bun and I fought to fit in that even though I was the best physical dancer I never looked like a dancer and then when I went to college I fought to fit in that dance company which I was technically great at but it's okay not to fit. Fitting in actually, not fitting in actually I learned later in life is a good thing because it makes you uh, excel, have to work harder and excel at what it is that you're good at. So. If you can just take what you love to do and what you're good at, no matter what, what someone thinks about it, no matter if you put yourself up against someone that's doing the same thing, it's okay to be a little bit different and take that and push through it and go forward. Because if you really are doing what you love to do, your whole life falls in place. And that's a personal life and business. You love what you do. It's okay if it's different from somebody else. If you just keep pushing and you can get through the space where you go, Man, that person, you know, doesn't 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 like what I do, or doesn't fit in, or doesn't think that I fit in, and just push through that to the other side is happiness, and that's what I would like to teach you. I, I would like to leave that. Do what you love, and happiness comes. And if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Is that the same thing? <laughs> He's so nuts. <laughs> You're crazy. I can surely rise again. Lord, a question of ease, but only her, her absolute just zeal for life. She's like, <laughs> it's like being with a cheerleader. I think your best thing is you never ever give up. Never gives up. Yeah.